much. Joining me now, we're going to roll over to Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Senator Paul, let me see. You got a lot of senators when your balanced budget plan this time. I mean, the last time we talked about this, you had only three or four. You're up to 20 something on this. I don't yeah. know how many you got. So I'm impressed with that. Yeah, I think that uh, in the abstract, all Republicans say they're for a balanced budget. They all vote for a constitutional amendment to balance it over five years. But when push comes to shove, we lose about half or a little over half. So I think we got 21 uh, votes on my amendment, which means still about uh, 28, 29 of them are essentially big government Republicans. So we are in the minority. Conservative Republicans are in the minority in the House. About 60 or 70 of them voted against this uh, deal to add $4 trillion to the debt. But on our side, on that vote, we actually got in the high 30s. We actually did better in the Senate mm. in showing opposition to this deal than they did in the House. Let me give you a quick... Uh, this is Newt Gingrich on the balanced budget last night on this show. Get your comment. Here comes Newt. Please take a listen. We had four straight balanced budgets, but we did it exactly like you and I talked about in the 70s and 80s. You cut taxes, you cut regulation, you increase entrepreneurship, you create a new generation of jobs, you have more people at work earning higher salaries and bigger capital gains, and guess what? Government revenue go up not by raising taxes, but by raising prosperity. What do you think, Senator Paul? Can we have a pro-growth balanced budget? <laughs> Well, I think he's right that the last time we were at balance, or at least sort of at balance uh, during that tenure, it was because of economic growth. Uh, revenue went up because of economic growth. And so you can't do it with austerity alone. But I think you have to have some austerity. You have to have some retrenchment. You have to have some cutting of costs. And uh, unfortunately, the bill that we passed, the raising of the debt ceiling, unlimited for two years, if you look at the spending caps versus revenue, they never cross. So it used to be the moderate, lukewarm, entrenched Republicans up here would vote for a 10-year balanced budget, which wasn't real. This is not even a 10-year balance. So this isn't a very conservative deal. This is our spending caps that never cross revenue. So this is a projection that the budget would never balance under the McCarthy plan. And it's also a projection of $4 trillion in added debt. I don't think there's anything conservative about it. And if that's not bad enough, before it passed, there was a struggle session with Schumer. They bring him to the floor. They didn't make him hold the placard, but he did recite and say, I promise to have emergency spending to break the caps immediately. So even the caps are going to be broken. There's going to be a Ukraine supplemental, emergency money for, for Ukraine, but they're also going to add on to that more military spending. They're going to immediately break the caps. My prediction is within two months, the fake deal, this terrible deal, they will actually ignore their own deal and break it by adding emergency spending within two months. Well, you're very pessimistic. Um, I, I don't, <laughs> I'm I, honest, Larry. I, I'm honest. You, I, I'm, <laughs> well, yes, you are always, you're nothing if not honest all the years <laughs> I've known you. Um, before I lose you, Senator, can I just ask you, what is your take? Um, is there a bribery case against Joe Biden as vice president or for all we know today as president? What do you mean? You know, Bill Barr says uh, that the, he never called off the investigation. It's been ongoing, although we haven't had any results. What does your gut tell you? I always ask this question. As you hear the reports and see the evidence and so forth, is there a bribery scandal from Mr. Biden? There, there's certainly some irony to the fact that they impeached Donald Trump because he tried to pressure people to investigate the bribery scandal. Now the impeachment's gone, but the bribery scandal is still there. And for the first time, someone's looking at it. I'm proud of Jamie Comer. He's from my state. I think he's doing a great job investigating this. And they shouldn't let go. I haven't seen enough of the facts to know if, if Joe Biden was involved with, with accepting money. I think without question, Hunter Biden was accept, accepting money and peddling his father's influence. And I think much of that was illegal and hasn't been prosecuted. Whether or not Joe Biden was directly involved, it should be, it should be investigated. And uh, I, you know, I, I think hold their feet to the fire. Christopher Ray, hold him in contempt, bring him in, make him show the evidence, let the public see the evidence. All right, Senator Rand Paul, thank you for visiting with us.